Senators Durbin, Murray, Stabenow, and Senator Baldwin. Now, we had a great, happy, and spirited discussion in our caucus. Democrats are ready and eager and united to finish this Congress on a very strong note. We are excited for the future with a new and hopefully a little larger majority than we had in the last Congress. This Senate, the longest 50-50 Senate in history, has been extraordinarily productive. Nearly two years into the Democratic majority, I want to take a moment to highlight the many, many accomplishments we've secured in this chamber under Democratic leadership. It's the most in recent memory. The American Rescue Plan, the Bipartisan Infrastructure Plan, the Chips and Science Act, the Gun Safety Bill, the Inflation Reduction Act, an omnibus package, and so many others in between. What people failed to see and see now, it served us very well in the election. While Republicans were, were t tossing firebombs over the wall, engaging in nasty, divisive rhetoric, just spewing forth lies about the election, we Democrats were focused on issues that mattered to people. So of the two big things that happened this year, one, we had a historic legislative session, and two, we, against all odds, we kept the Senate majority. The two are intrinsically related. And a lot of people forgot that. A lot of people just went for the firebomb of the day that was thrown by the Republicans instead of looking at actually what our candidates were talking about. Getting prescription drug costs lower for the public was one of their top priorities. We did it. We talked about it. We won the election. And that could be repeated on issue after issue. And we're continuing to move forward in the lame duck. We always try to work when we can on a bipartisan basis of our major bills. Most of them were passed bipartisan. And now we're going to move forward on a bipartisan basis, led by Senators Baldwin and Sinema, on the Respect for Marriage Act. I know passing the Respect for Marriage Act is as personal as it gets for many senators and their staffs, myself included. My daughter and her wife are actually expecting a little baby uh, in February. And um, so it matters a lot to so many of us uh, to get this done. And we're going to hold our first procedural vote on the bill tomorrow. After that, I hope that both sides can work quickly together and move this bill forward uh, onto the President's desk. And I have a plea for the Republicans and advice. If you embrace MAGA, you're going to keep losing. You're going to lose more. The embrace of MAGA in 2018, 2020, and 22 didn't work. We welcome you to work with us on a bipartisan basis to get things done for the American people. We're not going to have to get everything we want. They're not going to get everything they want. We'll stay true to our principles, but we're willing to compromise to get things done. That has been our watchword for two years, and we're going to continue it. We hope the Republicans will understand that. They're not going to understand it this week in the middle of all these heated um, elections for their leadership. But when we come back in January, hopefully after a productive lame duck session, at least a number of the non-MAGA Republicans will do what so many of them did with us now and or some of them are doing with us on the Respect for Marriage Act, and that is work with us in a bipartisan way and get things done. Get things done. What happened last night with Kerry Lake, that's proof positive that this MAGA stuff doesn't work. She was a great communicator. She's still lost in a purple state. And that's happened repeatedly uh, throughout um, this election. To follow the ministrations of Rick Scott, the guy who said cut Medicare, the guy who said tax the middle class, would be suicidal for the Republicans. So I hope that they, for the good of the country, but also for the good of themselves, because we want a part of people we can work with, will understand that. So we're going to keep working, pushing forward, and work for American families. Uh, let me call on Senator Durbin. Thanks, Chuck. And I want to publicly uh, thank Chuck Schumer and Gary Peters for the extraordinary uh, election results. They played as large a role as anyone in making sure that we had a real victory. And uh, they deserve credit and received it today from our caucus lunch. In the Dobbs decision, the Supreme Court erased the constitutional right to an abortion. 
This devastating and wrong decision represents the first time in our nation's history the Supreme Court has revoked a constitutional right. A majority of the Supreme Court and the Republican senators who chose them were on the wrong side of history and the wrong side of liberty. Voters on November 8th made it clear that they reject this approach, this so-called originalist approach to our Bill of Rights. In a disturbing concurrence, Justice Thomas made it clear that other constitutional rights are on the chopping block. Justice Thomas called on his colleagues on the court to double down on Dobbs, to basically attack the constitutional rights when it comes to birth control, marriage equality, and consensual relationships between LGBTQ people. We've got to stand up to this radical, regressive, Federalist Society vision of America. And that's exactly what we intend to do this week when we bring respect for marriage to the Senate floor. This bill will require the federal government to recognize a marriage between two individuals if the marriage is valid in the state where it was performed. It would also guarantee that valid marriages between two individuals are given full faith and credit regardless of the couple's sex, race, ethnicity, or national origin. Millions of Americans are facing dire consequences of what it would mean if Clarence Thomas has his way. Congress cannot allow the court to put LGBTQ families at risk. I want to thank my colleagues, particularly Tammy Baldwin, Susan Collins, Rob Portman, Kirsten Cinema, and Tillis for their leadership on this bill. I will look forward to supporting them and helping them get it across the line. The second issue I want to raise is the issue of judges, which is my special responsibility on the Judiciary Committee. Thanks to the efforts of this committee, extraordinary efforts, patience, and, and long-suffering, the Senate is about to confirm our 85th lifetime judicial appointment, including one to the Supreme Court, 25 to the Circuit Courts, and 59 to the District Courts. This will tie or exceed the record of recent presidents since we passed the era under Bill Clinton where we passed District Court judges by voice vote. So far, the Judiciary Committee has held hearings for and voted on 109 of President Biden's judicial nominees. In addition, 18 more nominees have had hearings that are on track to receive a vote in early December. This is tremendous progress, and we are bringing diversity to the federal judiciary that is unprecedented. We have outpaced the uh, Trump administration despite the fact that we have worked with a 50-50 Senate and an evenly split committee. After today's confirmation, there will be 24 judicial nominees pending on the calendar, and the committee expects more to follow. Our important committee work will continue throughout the remainder of the year. And I want to say that we've done extraordinary historic things when it comes to legislation. But these judges will be making contributions for years to come with the kind of balance on the federal bench that the American people want. Senator Murray. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Durbin. Thank you, Senator Schumer. Uh, as they have noted this week, we will be voting on the Respect for Marriage Act. After Roe v. Wade was overturned, I have heard from constituents back home who are concerned and worried about Justice Thomas's suggestion that their right to marry who they love could be ripped away. So this week, the Senate will act to protect against far-right attacks on Americans' fundamental right to marry who they love by ensuring same-sex and interracial marriages are recognized and respected by states. We cannot lose sight of the fact that this extreme right-wing court did not hesitate to take away a woman's right to choose. So this legislation matters. We've got to get it done. Helping people and solving problems, that is what Senate Democrats have been focused on this entire Congress. Whether it was passing the American Rescue Plan, keeping our first responders on the job and helping small businesses keep their doors open and getting shots into arms, or passing the bipartisan infrastructure law to upgrade our ports and our roads and our bridges to put us on a path to universal broadband, getting postal reform done, passing the first gun safety laws in three decades, passing the PACT Act for our veterans, or passing the most significant climate legislation in our country's history and lowering prescription costs and health care costs for families. If that feels like a lot, it should. Senate Democrats have gotten a lot done, 
And I believe the American people paid attention, but also believe they paid attention to what we couldn't get done for them and why. They saw Senate Republicans block our efforts to protect every woman's right to choose in this country. They saw Senate Republicans block basic common sense bills to allow women to travel across state lines to get abortion care or to protect doctors from jail time just for doing their jobs. They saw how extreme the Republican Party has become. They noticed when Republicans blocked our efforts to protect voting, voting rights and end gerrymandering. It's plain for everyone to see Democrats are working to protect our pocketbooks and your fundamental rights as Americans. So it shouldn't surprise anyone that when one party wants to force women to stay pregnant even when they do not want to be, or can't even admit that Joe Biden won the 2020 election fair and square, they will not be rewarded for their extremism. I'm ready to keep working for the American people, and I know all of my colleagues are as well. Thank you. Senator Stabenow. Well, thank you so much. It's great to be back with all of you, and I want to just start by saying our leadership elections are going to be easy. So um, it's under Senator Schumer's leadership. <laughs> I just wanted to reassure Chuck. That was my main quote, <laughs> to make sure he knew. Uh, but the truth of the matter is that from day one, in the most challenging of circumstances, Democrats have delivered for the American people over and over again. It's just the fact. From tackling the COVID pandemic to save lives, to get our children back to school safely, to be able to help people and businesses survive and thrive, that was number one. And then we delivered the infrastructure law one year ago today. The president signed that bill. And you can see progress everywhere you go. And I can assure you, in Michigan, you can see orange cones everywhere you go. Across the country, 6,900 projects are fixing our roads and bridges and airports and more. 2,800 bridges are being repaired and replaced. 5,000 new clean energy buses are taking our kids to school and taking people to work. Democrats also delivered on the Inflation Reduction Act, which invested in clean energy manufacturing. And we're bringing jobs home, which is so important to me in Michigan, a great place where we are having a renaissance in manufacturing. These investments will put our country on track to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions by 40 percent in about, two year, or about eight years. And they're also lowering costs for Americans. The average American household will save up to $1,000 on their energy bills next year. The cost of prescription drugs finally coming down. For the first time, Medicare is going to be able to negotiate prescription drug prices. And folks on Medicare will see their cost of insulin caps starting in January, lower out-of-pocket prescription costs, and free vaccines. And we're doing all of this while reducing the deficit by more than $300 billion. How? Because every day we get up and suit up and put the people before the powerful and the wealthy. And now Democrats are going to deliver for our LGBTQ family and friends. The bottom line is that in a 50-50 Senate, and I think this is actually a story, folks, you don't get closer than 50-50. And in a 50-50 Senate, we have been tenacious and strategic and dedicated to work with whoever will work with us, whoever will join with us, to get things done to improve the lives of the American people all across our country. And we are committed to continuing to do that. Thank you, Senator Stabenow. Senator Baldwin, along with Senator, Senator Sinema, work really hard on marriage equality, and she's, a, she's our cleanup up hitter. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so as everybody here knows, uh, midterm elections are usually uh, a referendum on the party in power. Uh, we expect uh, uh, there to be great headwinds, uh, and this year was different. 
It was different for a number of reasons, but as uh, at the forefront, it's clear that there was a rejection of what I would describe as MAGA extremism. The American people rejected the election-denying extremism and sent a clear message that they want unfettered access to uh, the ballot box and freedom over their elections without the interference uh, from politicians. The American people rejected the extremism aimed at a woman's right to choose and said that they want freedom over their bodies without interference from politicians. And yes, the American people took note that by overturning Roe versus Wade, the Supreme Court has put marriage equality in the crosshairs. The American people want people to have the freedom to marry whom they love and choose. And yes, uh, uh, now we are taking that mandate from the American people and bringing forward the Respect for Marriage Act. Individuals in same-sex marriages and interracial marriages need and deserve the confidence and the certainty that their marriages are legal and will remain legal. These loving couples should be guaranteed the same rights and freedoms as every other marriage. And the American people agree. 70% of Americans, including a majority of Democrats, Republicans, and unaffiliated people, support marriage equality. Yesterday, we introduced a bipartisan amendment to clarify what this bill does and what it does not do. Uh, we made it clear that this legislation leaves intact religious liberties afforded under the Constitution and will not take away or alter any religious liberty or conscious protection. We are confident that this amendment has helped earn the broad bipartisan support needed to pass our common sense legislation into law and protect millions of Americans in gay and interracial marriages. I am personally thrilled uh, to move this legislation forward and to pass marriage equality into law. And I appreciate the um, hardworking bipartisan group of senators who really put in a lot of effort uh, to get us to this moment. Thank you, Senator Ball. Questions? Yes. Can I ask you about your deal with Senator Manchin on permitting reform? What do you expect that to be attached to? Do you expect it to be attached um, As you saw, when we tried it last time, there weren't enough Republican votes. I'm working with Senator Manchin to see what we can get done. Given his history, Next. Sure. We hear your takeaways from 2022, it turns out 2024. Do you believe that President Biden is the best Democratic nominee for president? As I've said, if President Biden is, decides to run, I will enthusiastically support him. Please yes. Sir, um, if I could direct this question for Senator Murray, actually. Senator Feinstein has indicated that she does not want to serve as Senate Halt. President Pro Tem for uh, Senator Murray, your next line. Stay tuned. Next. Um, you mentioned that you intend to sit down with Peter Mitchell Powell. Has that meeting happened yet? What is your approach? Is it any different from this last conference? Uh, first, it hasn't happened yet. We're waiting until they have their elections. I think they're having a discussion in those, about those elections today in their lunch, which is still ongoing. My <laughs> Your question is in answer. No, I'm um, teasing him. Um, so the bottom line is we want to get things done. And we proved last time in a 50-50 Congress that we could. Now, I have a hierarchy. Hierarchy A, the top of the hierarchy, get it done in a bipartisan way when you can. We passed six or seven major bills just between June and August and other bills like the infrastructure bill and the postal bill previously. If we can't get it done um, with Republicans, 
do it on your own. The IRA is one of the things we're proudest of. The Republicans, because they're in the throes of big oil, would not do climate change. Because they're so dominated by big pharma, they wouldn't do the pharmaceutical stuff. So we went and do did those on our own. The third and least desirable choice, although sometimes necessary, is an accountability vote where you can't win but you show where the votes are. That will continue to be our approach. That will continue to be our approach. Yes, gentleman with the red hair back there. Look, we'd like to get a debt ceiling done in this work period. The best way to get it done, the way it's been done the last two or three times, is bipartisan, and I intend shortly to sit down with the Republican leader and try to work that out. Yes? Uh, it looks like the NDA is heading into conference committee without a floor vote. Um, can you explain some of your thinking for not putting it on the floor? And what sort of well, last time, the way the floor, the floor is so tied up because you get even a single Republican to knock out all the amendments. You saw what I think it was Marco Rubio did last time. So the approach is to try and work this out. Uh, between the two, the, between the four leaders of the, of the committees, Democrat, Republican, House and Senate, and then the top leadership, and get a bill we can all agree on and get it on the floor. We think we'll get more done that way. Sir, do you, yes? Do you expect the Omnibus to include another Ukraine supplemental spending? I would hope it does, and I'd hope we get bipartisan support. One more. Mr. Yes? Peter Schumer, there are reports crossing now that uh, make, uh, appears that Russian missiles crossed into NATO member Poland. Do you have any I can't give comments now because I don't know the details. Thank you, everybody. Take care.